Hello Libra, and welcome to your reading for the Virgo Super Full Moon. This is for the two week period from the 18th of February to the 3rd of March. So, um, welcome to Ascending Without Wings. Um, as I always say, please feel free to like, share, or subscribe if that is what you wish to do. And I believe we already have your um, planet card Libra. Highly appropriate. But another one has fallen out. I will double check which one is which. Just to let you know. Yes. Okay. I'll get your house card as well. So you've got the moon. How appropriate for a full moon that you're affected by the moon. It's the unconscious, sensitive, inner emotion and responses aspect of yourself. Michael, what's the house for Libra? Wow. Okay. Okay, Libra. These cards. So, the planet that's affected for you is, as I said, your unconscious, sensitive inner emotions and responses. So, your subconscious side, your very, very deep emotions. Um, I know I'm quite strongly affected by the moon. I'm not a Libra. I don't actually have it in my major signs, but this full moon has been intense for a lot of people. Um, and some of us have been feeling a very deep emotional aspects of it coming up to the surface to be released um you know like childhood stuff or past life stuff that is you've healed it already you've processed it a lot but it's just that what last layer of the damage that was left on your soul basically you know it's yeah like emotional trauma things that have really really hurt you and made you develop things like your fear of abandonment and you know fear of being alone or fear of not being good enough self-worth issues, all of those things. There's an emotional thing behind it. So it's kind of whatever the really deep stuff was there, it's coming up. So it could be quite an intense time, but I think it's coming up for a reason because it needs to go so it can stop um, sort of weighing you down, basically. And the reason why I say this is because the planet is the seventh house. This area of your life is about long-term significant partners, romantic, business, or family. Okay, so... <laughs> Some very serious aspects of your life, long-term relationships, and you know, business relationships are as important as your personal relationships, because your business leads to your prosperity and your abundance, and you know, your ability to live a comfortable, carefree life without financial debt and all that kind of drama that comes with it and the stress that comes with it. That's as important as the relationships in your life, because the relationships in your life they also nourish you and you know keep you going and they feel make you feel supported. So they're equally as important. And if you've got subconscious stuff going on, um, it can really cloud the water, so to speak. And like, I love how you know, in the picture, it's kind of like a hollow moon in the sky, but it, the reflection is the more noticeable one. I, know, I always feel like there's more than meets the eye. You have to look beneath the surface right now. It's very, very cool. Okay. Oh, these readings are going to be long. I've done one already for Taurus, and it was an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes. But it's a two-week period. And Archangel Michael said that there's going to be 12 cards here, so let's see what happens. Okay, what else do we have? We've got the Queen of Cups starting off the reading. Reflective. Very emotional. She's actually holding a baby in this card. I'm using the patched tarot deck as well. Um, very, very spiritual deck. And the next card that we have is the hair fat. Um, that spirituality. Then we have Ace of Swords, Realization. Then King of Cups, Responsive. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Five, six, coming. Oops. Wow. What else? Here, Michael. What do we have? So we have four Libra. <laughs> They're all landing in my lap now. Okay, what else we have?
Ooh. All right. I think that's all of them. Um, let's just see. All the right cards in the right order. Your rest of the Yeah, I just roll them. Okay. I'm actually just going to rearrange these cards. Because we're going to have clarifiers for all of them, and this is going to make it. Easier to say. Okay. All right. I need to make a please clarify the Queen of Cups. Wow. Okay. Queen of Cups is clarified by the Sun card. Then Hierophant, please. He's clarified by the Hierophant, I think in reverse, but I'm not sure. That's beautiful. Then Ace of Swords is clarified by Judgment card. King of Cups. Nine of Cups. The Priestess. Okay, what about Seven of Cups? Wow, Strength card. The Sun. What is the Sun clarified from? Okay. Page of Cups. Um, three of Wands clarified by the Six of Pentacles. Then we've got Eight of Wands. What's Eight of Wands clarified? All the correct clarifies down a little bit. Any reversal? Okay. All right. And last three clarifiers, please. For the Prince of Discs. Okay. What about the Four of Cups? Four of Cups, please. Thank you. Any three or four for Thank you. Is this one? Please clarify the type of ones. Everyone clarify in here. Okay. Please clarify the type of ones. Really? This is Okay. <clears throat> wow, this is going to be a long read. Okay, I'm just going to get on with it. Let's turn everything the right way up. This is crazy good reading, like just from the energy from first glances. Wow. I really like it. And I will show you guys the cards in just a second. So, you know, to sort of have a bird's eye view, shall I say. <laughs> so to speak, oh my goodness, um, very twin flamey cards here as well. Um, but let's just get on with it. So, um, subconscious stuff going on. We're starting your reading for the 18th of February through to the 3rd of March. Off with the Queen of Cups. And this one actually says reflective. She's holding a baby. So, you know, very maternal, very nurturing person. She could be a mother. She could be someone that works in childcare. Um, yeah, you're an air sign, but this could definitely be you. Um, you could be embodying these energies, the tree of life's here. Um, and there's like, this. she's holding a chalice that's actually got the tree of life coming out of it. So that's really, really beautiful. It's like, she's got the power of creation in her hands. Um, and, you know, people that reproduce too. <laughs> quite literally create a child um another being so yeah that's kind of beautiful but she's very um attuned with her emotion this is different to the dorida weight tarot like even the energy of this queen of cups is very loving and calm and gentle and very receptive um this is like the awakened um uh, queen of cups energy um it's an ascended higher perspective it's a more loving um so it's not as detached. It's somebody that doesn't get too, she's balanced basically. She doesn't get too caught up in negative emotions. She's able to balance negative and positive emotions. And I think that's something that's a recent development because you've got it clarified by the sun card. So sun cards about new beginnings, really bright, happy new beginnings. Okay. So I feel like this 
energy, you're, you embodying this energy is a new transition that's happening over the period of this full moon or it's happened already and it's sort of playing out now. Okay, so that is that. Um, all right, now let's get on the next one. Um, the next card is the Hierophant. So in this particular case, we've got spirituality. So, you know, in traditional tarot, that Hierophant is about dogma and tradition and about, you know, having rules and regulations that dictate how things are done being quite strict about it, kind of, you know, um, almost fanatical kind of can have that energy. It's, it's too uptight. It's too stuck. Um, but I feel like the Hierophant being clarified by the Hierophant, it's releasing that negative aspect. It's rising above. It's having a very deep sense of spiritual um, progress going on. And also... I feel like you're know, tapping into your subconscious, your higher consciousness as well, like tuning into your higher self, you know, developing a, quite a strong bond within your, yourself and higher self because it's kind of like even in this picture, there's you in front of this book. So trying to attain spiritual knowledge and that's strengthening your connection to your higher self, which is above you, the fifth dimensional version of you. Pretty perfect. Um, love it. Okay. Next card we have is the Ace of Swords, Realization. So it, this is divinely guided or divinely inspired realization. It's pretty, like, it, I, this, just looking at this card, it kind of takes my breath away. I feel like, you know, just almost like you get knocked off your feet with this bolt of lightning kind of, oh, wow, okay, I get it. <laughs> I really get it. I see the full big picture now. It's brilliant. And funny how I'm saying I get it and I look at what's in my hand and it's the judgment card. So how appropriate it's a realization. It's an epiphany. It's a turning point. It's a realization of something major and it's a second chance. It's a decision to try something again. It's a decision to, you know, see if you've tried absolutely everything there is. You can try to make certain things work because you feel it's worth making it work and you feel like there's a connection or something important there that you need to see out or fulfill almost, I guess is another word for it. Um, and this has a very, for all the twin flames out there in separation, this is very much either you or somebody else having a realization and epiphany just going, oh my God, okay, this is my twin flame. Yes, we've had arguments. Yes, there's been tension and things like that, but oh, I can't walk away from this connection. It's too strong. I love this person too much. And even if I were to try, it wouldn't happen. I see the bigger purpose. I see why everything's happened. I see why they broke my heart. I see why everything happened the way it did happen because it had to happen that way. Okay. So I really feel like there's a few people having these little realizations at the moment. So whether that's you or your twin or a soulmate or a family or a friend, even, um, it does not matter. This could be anybody around you or, you know, somebody it's coming up in your reading Libra. So, you know, somebody that's strong in your energy, somebody you talk regularly, um, someone you live with, partner, friend, family, as I said, um, I like this reading here, uh, Libra. And then we have the next card, the King of Cups, a responsive. So how awesome is it that you are the energy of the Queen of Cups and this is your King of Cups. This is your divine counterpart. It does not matter if it's a man or a woman, it's somebody embodying this energy. And he's responsive when you're reflective. How perfect is that? Okay. Um, it's a perfect compliment. This is your King of Cups. And he's on his horse, on his water horse, um, on his way to you galloping away through the ocean with a cup of passion. Look at that flaming, flaming passion that he is carrying for you. Oh, oh baby. Um, this could be him to you or you to him. Actually, that's so look like flaming passion. <laughs> okay, I'm having a moment right now. Okay, it's actually a crab. It's, a, it's an orange crab. So that looked like flaming passion from a distance because my eyes aren't very good. But hey, you know what? That's a crab. That's cancer. Um, this person could be a cancer. They could have cancer in their chart. Maybe you have cancer in your chart. Don't know. But I feel like um, 
despite the fact that my eyes are funny, you know, when somebody in tarot is offering you their cup, their cup is full of love and deep emotion. So passion is part of deep emotion as well. So it applies. I'm not taking back my excitement about the passion. Um, and this, this person's approach, this earth person's arrival or offering this cup is something that you've wished for. This is a very deep, heartfelt wish. So twin flames, you're the return of the divine masculine or the twin that's not in your life right now, uh, whether it's divine masculine or feminine, it doesn't matter. Um, the twin returning. This is your wish being granted from the universe and you know it and you can feel it. You felt it coming for a while. And I think you're kind of surprised at the shift because you, I feel like you did the whole, you know, surrendering to divine timing and all of that stuff, but you get to a point where you're kind of, okay, I feel all this stuff in 5D, but I don't see anything going on in 3D. So like, what gives, man? <laughs> you know, like, what's going on? And even I've been there recently, where it's just like, whatever, man, I, I don't even want to know, like, whatever. And now I'm being sort of, my heartstrings are being pulled by me, being led back to watch Atlantis, which the dude in Atlantis reminds me of my twin. He looks very much like my twin. Um, and I watch that and I fall in love with him again, slowly but surely. It's kind of inevitable. It's like, oh, that smile, oh my God, oh my God, love it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm making a good fall of myself. All right. Um, no, but I totally do. I don't care if the whole universe knows it. I'd say his name if I wasn't concerned for his privacy. And I didn't check. I haven't checked. I haven't spoken to him yet. So it's been almost two years, people. I still have that whole thing of, yes, he may return. He may not return. But I'm not going to die if he doesn't. You know, um, I'm not going to be alone for the rest of my life. That's for sure. Whether that's with him or not, time will tell. Um, but my team insists that he'll be back this month. So, Aries, I mean, <laughs> Libra. Uh, I don't know why I called you Aries just then, but I know there's a Libra out there that Aries is very significant for. So they'll be laughing at it about now when they're watching this video. Um, and they'll be one of the first to get the link as well. So. <laughs> I love you, hon. Um, Oh, that's so funny, Aries, hey? All right, I'm going to move on because, funny, I'm holding a card that does represent fire in my hand when I said Aries. Um, okay, so the next card that we have is of the Priestess. So this is the High Priestess in the normal tarot. Intuition, very in tune with your higher self, your soul. You're very much guided. You're not, like, you're rowing the boat, but every turn, every step of the way, if there's an opportunity for anything divinely guided, anything that is in service of humanity and things like that, you are bang, you know it, you intuitively are drawn. You are just following your flow and your guidance and it's taking you where you need to go and where you need to be, which is making you actually feel extremely victorious and like you've accomplished something and you've come a long way, which you have and you should be giving yourself a pat on the back because this card signifies, you know, a long fought for victory. Something good is happening and that is you are getting comfortable in your own skin and very in tune with yourself. You're in your element, as people say, you know, like you are just the master of your domain. Like things, it's like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, that thing, you've got the Midas touch or something like that. You know, like everything you do is just coated gold plated. <laughs> you can do no wrong. It's that kind of an energy. You're feeling like you're truly on top of the world and in your element and manifesting all of that, but also just sort of being able to feel your way through life, like as an empath and with intuition and, you know, reading the energies and emotions around certain things. When you don't quite know how to differentiate your own and others, it can be quite tricky and you can sort of get a bit confused and hang on, how come I'm feeling like this? Like, where does this even come from? And then when you realize, hang on, there's a way to work out, you know, what other people's emotions and what my own is, then when you sort of feel something, you stop, do a little check, and um, you're like, ah, oh, that ain't me. <laughs> I can detach. I can, you know, snap out of this because that's not my emotions I'm feeling. And you can send love and light to the people who are feeling those emotions that you're picking up on, which helps them shift it um, and visualize the violet flame around them if you can. And 
that'll help them shift it. And that's your little bit of light work, you know, doing that extra little bit for the people around you. But you're very intuitive. You know what people need, what you need as well. And that's very important too. Like, aside from what people need, you know, putting your own self first, you know, for your own well being, like self care, self love, nurturing yourself, you know, making sure you're getting enough rest, especially with the energy that's so intense and so crazy lately. It's important to be able to take time out for meditation, to take time out just to, you know, journal or to whatever, something creative, work with your hands, um, get out in nature, sit on the grass, you know, like, Something as simple as walking bare feet in grass is very, very grounding and very relaxing. And if you can sit down on the grass and actually visualize roots coming out from your tailbone and going straight into the core of the earth and anchoring you into the core of the earth, and if you visualize a nice big um, quartz crystal at the center of it, and like your the roots from your tailbone are actually anchoring into something like that, um, and then send your love energy down and then sit back and allow mother earth to send you some love it's quite beautiful you feel it and it's just it goes to your heart and just explodes it's it's quite beautiful um so try it if you haven't already i'm sure a lot of people that are watching this are way advanced enough to know stuff like that so i'm sure there's others that don't necessarily know so that's for them <laughs> all right so the next card that we have is the seven of cups illusion <clears throat> So whether this is you or somebody else being a little bit elusive about the love that they have in their life, because cups is about love. It's about emotions. And in the traditional tarot, it's about, you know, having seven cups with different things in them. They all, some of them look quite appealing. Some of them are kind of scary and one being hidden under a cloth. So you don't actually know exactly what it is. It's kind of like, mm, careful what you wish for or careful which one you choose. Cause you might end up losing a hand. Um, you might get something good, but the chances are kind of not, the odds don't look very good. Um, and in this case as well, like you've got what one, two thing, two cups that actually look okay. Um, the rest kind of look a bit dodgy to me. One's got a snake. One's got, I don't know what that is. Like that kind of looks like flames to me. It looks like a little cup of fire. There's a little castle there. Um, there's a, a dragon in one of them. Um, and then one's got like a, you know, a, a wreath kind of thing that you put on your head, like ancient Greek times, and it's a little metal in there. But, you know, as you can see, there's some good options, some bad options, but it's kind of illusion, thinking that you're spoiled for chess, thinking that you are the bee's knees and you are so wanted that everybody wants you at home. I'm hot. <laughs> it's very much that, that illusion, okay? Because none of us are hot stuff and everybody wants us and all of that stuff. It does not work out. Sorry to say it, but um, it is. And part of this whole process is to lose the ego. And this is far from losing the ego. Um, so whether this is you behaving that way or somebody else behaving that way towards you, it doesn't matter because you are finding strength um, or the other person is finding strength to not care about that or the strength to not feel that way. Because that actually comes from a, a place of insecurity. It comes from a place of lack. A lack of love, lack of self-assuredness, lack of self-assuredness. Did I just say that? <laughs> Being secure in yourself, basically. Okay. So the people that have this illusion tend to be fooling themselves more than anybody else and acting a bit loose and a bit slimy or, you know, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just the hottest thing and everybody wants to piece of me, bye bye. Um, that stuff is a bit of fooling yourself. So perfectly um, illusion. So, and. <laughs> I've had partners like this before. And it's just like, oh. the crazy stuff people do, hurt people do silly shit, okay? Waving a phone number in front of your partner's face and going, oh, by the way, this is an opportunity I got last time. I was like, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go now. Um, you know, petty, disgusting shit like that. It's happened. It's been done, people. Um, but <sighs> illusion, once again, find the strength to not see the pettiness in it, not allow it to bother you. Find the strength to realize that it's actually their insecurity. Send them love and be compassionate about it rather than get um, rubbed up the wrong way. Don't allow it to be abrasive to you. You know, find the strength to rise above it. I feel like that's the message right there. <clears throat> I say, yes, it is. 
Thank you, Archangel Michael. All right, the next card we have, lovely Libra. I love you guys, by the way. I love all my star signs. I love everybody. That's, you know, one of my most amazing, coolest, closest friends right now is Libra. And so is my middle sister, but yeah. Let's talk about the sun card, shall we? That's the next card in your reading. Illumination is the keyword here. So illumination in all aspects of your life. Your shadow sides are being illuminated. You're seeing the unconscious aspects of yourself. Some deep stuff is coming up for releasing and purging. But there's a major focus in your life right now as well in your long-term relationship. So if you're married or in a partnership, you're kind of looking for a new beginning in that, which is more of a strengthening of bonds if you're already in a relationship. For those of you who aren't in a relationship, I feel like there is reconnection going on with possibly the twin flame or a soulmate, um, whether it's a reconnection or um, like a new arrival of somebody. There's a new beginning going on there and there's a new beginning in love because there is a page of cups clarifying it. So this is the return or the arrival of somebody or the strengthening of bonds. Okay, and there is an offer being made here, uh, an offer that's not just their heart, it's a little piece of their soul. You know, there's a fish in that cup. He's not just offering you his cup of love. He's offering you something more. There's, you're this person's everything, my friend. This, there's a very, um, you know, that I love you with my heart, body, and soul. Heart, mind, body, soul. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the thing is. But with every part of them, they love you and they want this new beginning with you. And whether this is you feeling that way about somebody else and making that offer or whether this offer is coming to you, but I feel like it's coming, whether it's going to be between now and the 3rd of March or in the week after that, because this full moon is way intense. I felt it six days in advance. <laughs> and the emotional aspect was just like, yeah, getting put through the ringer. Um, and you know, most of the weekend as well uh, was quite full on and actually felt better since yesterday, sort of about halfway ish. So, you know, I, you know, I'm not alone <laughs> in this. I know a lot of people are feeling it, but we don't necessarily communicate. So if you are feeling it, I'm with you people. I totally feel you. <laughs> it's not fun. It isn't fun. It is an intense moon. Okay. So the next card that we've got is Three of Wands, purpose, 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 passion, being driven, being eager to pursue your purpose in life or your passion in life, which are tied together. Whatever you're passionate about will lead you to your purpose. Okay, um, that's definitely a given. But it's a three, you've got Ascended Masters energy, you've got the um, Triple Goddess, I just heard. So this is very much like divinely guided, divinely supported path that you are taking. And it's something to do with fairness and justice and an even exchange of energy. So you're finding purpose in maybe advocating for fairness with other people, um, fair treatment, just treatment, like something like that. Um, maybe advocating for people to be prosecuted for, you know, mistreating animals, for hurting animals, things like that. I don't, I feel like this, this has something to do with life purpose, um, soul mission stuff. Very, you know, like this is going to be something in your life, humanitarian stuff or something that you're going to do where you're going to help balance out the scales, make things be fair and even exchange your energy. You know, even though people may be limited in resources, like, Something maybe for homeless people or people in really difficult circumstances where you have found some sort of a, a thing where you can make their lives easier and make things a bit fairer for them in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be homeless people. It doesn't have to be kids or animals. It can be whatever. But somehow balancing energy, balancing the give and take, um, the good and bad, you know. Um, I'm going to say good and bad. The shadow and the light, let's say that. But I like it. I like it a lot, Libra. This is this is a beautiful reading. I thought Taurus had a beautiful reading, but she, you guys are giving them a run for the money. Um, okay. So the next card that we have, wow. Okay, is the Eight of Wands, and here it says shift in the Patch Tarot deck. Shift. So this is like a shift of energy, a shift of uh, transition. Like I just said, transition of a phase or a period of time, like a. a you know, a part of your life, 
I feel like this is a shifting of energy and moving towards, um, for those of you who are twin flames, a union. Um, you also shifting towards happier times where you come together with family and friends and you celebrate, like celebration scene. But it's also the 11-11 card. It's the twin flame union card. Okay, this is the twin flame union card, but there's also, you know, other cards that signify marriage and things like that. But I feel like this is, for those of you who haven't yet heard from your twin, because you've got the Ace of Swords earlier in your reading with the Judgment card with the Realization, I feel like, yes, with this full moon, things are being realized and it may take a little bit of time because it's like in the next lot of six, um, have we got the card about, you know, shift. And in the traditional tarot, it's about communication, back and forth communication. But in this, this is like, you know, action in every form. It's got all a figure in all the colors of the chakras taking action. So this is like, you know, I feel like rainbow body, <laughs> rainbow body or um, rainbow light body um, activation or something like that. Um, some serious ascension related stuff, but this is a huge shift for you, like stepping forward on with your purpose and your passion. But this has to do with your twin flame as well, because you've got the 11-11 card. I feel like this is your, you realizing or getting the guidance about what your purpose and you know, your mission is with your twin because I know we have stuff that we're supposed to be achieving by ourselves, but then once we come into union with that twin, we've also got certain missions that we need to do with them. So that could definitely um, play a role in this case. Sorry, I have to think about what I was trying to say. Um, ah, yeah, okay. So the next card that we have, my lovely Libra, is the Prince of Discs. Pragmatic, and we have many multicolored or various colors of butterflies here. So there's a lot of transformation, a lot of shifts that has gone on. This is someone with Earth in their chart does not have to be an Earth sign um, specifically, but they embody these energies. Very stable, very grounded. Um, you know, in this world, but not of it. <laughs> um, spiritual, evolved, tuned in with their own guidance, but they're able to maintain a 3D life and do what they're doing over here. And whether this is you embodying this energy or somebody around you, they're actually giving you a lot of emotional fulfillment because the Ace of Cups is here to clarify it. Ace of Cups is about complete emotional fulfillment to the point that your cup of emotion is running over, you know, it's overflowing with emotion. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's, there's been, you know, pain and there's been growth in your life. However, there's a lot of emotional fulfillment. There's a lot of feeling grounded and stable and steady at the moment as well um, through this full moon or, you know, in the week or two after it, definitely. Um, and then we have the second last card, <laughs> the Four of Cups, withdrawal. So, you know, Four of Cups is about being so bored with love in those cups that's in front of you that you are too oblivious to see there's a person wandering around looking for you to try and offer you their cup of love. So be careful, Libra, that you're not that cut off, that you're not seeing the love that's being offered to you, whether it be from, you know, your divine team or whether that be from a person around you. You might realize that if you miss this person when they're walking around right now, you may not be happy about that. Um, so take that leap of faith. Stop being withdrawn. If you're feeling the energy shift from your twin or from somebody around you, Take that leap of faith, drop the baggage, drop the crap that's happened in the past because this full moon is helping you purge that and take that leap of faith with this person that you know is important to your life, okay? I hope you do take that leap of faith because the last card that we've got here is the five of ones, struggle, conflict, infighting, petty, immature, quarreling, like, you know, childish fighting when you're adults, being petty, nitpicking over stupid things, little things, passive aggressive stuff, all of that. Um, and you're stressing about it. So don't stress about it. Rise above it. There's no point in stressing about it. No point in losing sleep and, you know, having headaches and worrying about it and trying to be like, what the hell am I going to do to get myself out of this situation or around this situation? Rise above it. Okay. Just be the better person. If somebody's throwing shit at you, Turn around and throw some love at them. Seriously, if somebody says, you're an idiot, I love you too. And actually do it with a smile. And it's just like, whatever you want to do, 
whatever little verbal arrows, whatever stones you want to throw at me, I'm not letting it touch me because I'm maintaining a high vibe. I'm not letting your pettiness get to me because that way you won't be staying up at night worrying and having this crap stirring around in your head because the second they threw one of these swords in your direction, you cut it down with love. <laughs> love, most powerful weapon of all. And quite literally, I know you'll be like, you know, when somebody's calling me names or hurting my feelings, why am I going to tell them I love them? Guess what? Because you're transmuting it. Laugh at them or tell them that you love them. Simple as that. Yeah. Like when people start getting, like I've got some, uh, I've had in the past um, some quite edgy personalities or tempers in my family. Um, and, you know, somebody out of nowhere is unnecessarily, you <laughs> turn go, thanks, love you too. And either they're going to laugh and it'll lighten the moment and it, you know, diffuses it and doesn't turn into a fest for everybody. Um, or like, they're kind of just going to go, oh shit, okay, what do I do? Like, why am I reacting like this? And sort of like stop for a minute, which will allow the energy to shift. And you'll probably have a little giggle about it anyway. Okay. Um, because it's funny when you, you do that to people. Like I used to do it all the time when I was younger, I used to do it. This is like, you know, I've had high, highly edgy people around me all the time. So to diffuse the edginess, I would use little cheeky comments like that, but yeah, love you too. And it's like, your claws are no match for my love, baby, you know? And it's a very high vibe way of handling things, uh, you know, rather than sarcasm to retaliate to someone that's being sarcastic, which is kind of a, it, it's not a very high vibe thing, especially if it's sort of laced with emotion. Okay. And we know that's the um, Queen of Swords energy. You didn't have the Queen of Swords in this reading. I'm not saying that, but it's just, you know, what I'm trying to, the image I'm trying to portray for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just quickly grab these cards and I'm going to pull some Oracle cards for you, Libra, because I don't like that ending, but I kind of feel like it's an opportunity for you or a lesson for you in how far you have come. It's kind of the, if you rise above this situation and you tackle it with love and compassion rather than lowering yourself to the pettiness and, you know, getting caught up in that kind of thing, I think you will probably be quite proud of yourself. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to see how far you've come. Yeah, like that in itself is something huge. Okay, so you may have a few oracle cards. <laughs> All of these protection messages for Libra. Okay. All right. Um, am I pulling other cards? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to pull all the cards for you. Um, Wisdom of the Oracle. So you've got, I'll tell you which cards you have. All of them came out in reverse. So it's um, a protection message. So it's almost like a bit of warning or advice for you. Okay. Um, so you've got number 18, Serendipity, which is awesome. It's about being divinely guided and having a higher power wanting to work through you. But when it's reversed, it's almost like a warning message. It's like, get out of your own way. I actually got this today. <laughs> Um, so I'm pretty sure it is, yeah, um, getting out of your own way. And then the next one we have is number 39, new life. So 39 reduces down to 11, new beginnings, new life, how appropriate. Um, numerologist, G-wise. Um, okay, sorry, shuffling these cards. And then we've got number 24, time for a nap. Important, resting when you need it. Don't wear yourself out. These energies are intense and... I mean, you're getting cards like this telling you to do it, make sure you do, please. Um, and 16, all that glitters is not gold. Don't chase the shiny sparkly because it's not always um, what you expect. The grass isn't always greener on this other side. It's greener where you water it. <laughs> I just said, that's right. Thank you, Akin. It's true. But that's the thing. Every single one of us is guilty of thinking the grass is green, green on the other side because, hey, it hasn't has the annoying people on the other side. Guess what? Let's do the When I realized that, when I sort of put it to myself, it took me a little while to kind of accept it. But I had to sort of just go, right, you know, you know better than that. Don't be immature and, you know, argue a point that you know you can feel is right. Even in your soul, it's like, mm -mm, come on, Randy, that's just a cop out. It's like, mm, can I pull this off? Can I just pretend, play dumb, and hopefully I'll put it off? It's not cool. Right, can you make anything else for Libra? 
But this one, yeah. So you got two Archangel Michael cards. The first one is Lean on God and the Angels for Support. So there's a little prayer there. I'll read that to you now. And it says, Dear God and Angels, I give you this, briefly describe the situation, now and completely. I step out of the way and allow divine miracles to shine through everyone and everything involved. Very nice. Yeah, seriously, there's no point in worrying and losing sleep and being up at night. Give it to God. And Archangel Michael It's like... You know what's going on. You know how it's going to play out. You take it. Uh, like, to stop it from weighing you down. The next card is self-respect. I like it. Very, very cool. So the prayer here says, Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me see myself as you see me through the eyes of love. Thank you for honoring and respecting me. Please guide me to do some the same for myself and grant me the courage to see, speak up on my own behalf. I ask for your protection in all of my relationships so that I am surrounded by loving and kind people. Very nice. That's true. Yeah, if the people that are in your life are not meeting you halfway and giving you the respect and love that you give them, it's not exactly fair, is it? Okay, so Goddess Guidance Arc card. Um, see, okay. what Goddess Guidance do we have for Libra? Like we got a few. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna read you the message from the books because they're like little messages from the goddesses themselves. So let's just go in our logical order. First one is aim. Leap of faith. And it says, take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. So, just find this page. This is the card. And it says, procrastinating about your dreams won't make them go away. Neither will it make them happen. Indecision is the death of the soul's burning passion to improve, grow, and learn. Don't worry about making a wrong decision. Instead, Worry about making no decision at all. Then take time to pray, meditate, investigate, research, go on nature walks, and make your decision. Once made, the universal energies will immediately support your decision and doors will successfully open as if by magic. The magic you see is that, is that you've set your mind to accomplish something. And this intention is what sets on, sets on your magical journey, sets you on your magical journey, sorry. Um, trust that the universe will support you in all ways. Trust that the intention is clear and right for you. And then take a leap of faith and jump fully and squarely into the midst of putting your dream into action. Don't hesitate or delay a moment longer. That's beautiful. Um, so just a bit about this goddess. Ain is a powerful Celtic goddess and a fairy queen who gave birth to incarnated fairies from her romances with mortal men. Ain is revered in Ireland for helping to grow crops and oversee animals. You can call upon Ain when you need additional guidance and the courage to take risks. Very nice. Um, not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, so if I'm not, I do apologize for. Oh, sorry, Ona. Actually, it's pronounced Onya, actually. Onya? Yeah, A W N Y A is the pronunciation. Onya. 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 Mm. <laughs> I like the way that sounds. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, see, I have too much fun. To... Okay, next card is Coventina Purification. Card, and it says, It is time for a cleansing detoxification of your body and mind. So the message from Coventina is, This message comes as a help and not as an affront or a criticism. Your vessel has become clogged by overuse of harsh chemicals and the offending source is within your psyche. You've been ignoring your body's many signals and screams for relief from the steady ingestion of impurities. Perhaps you've also noticed a slump in your energy level and your degree of joy has lagged as well. Never mind these past effects, though, as the solution is at hand right now. Now that you've heard this message, do not hesitate for even a moment to make new arrangements. You'll want to keep a sharp focus on the contents of your mind and speech as well. 
for the words you think and speak are the very diet that supports or thwarts you. Choose purity and I promise you a changed outlook for the better. Nice one. So, Coventina, she's a powerful Celtic goddess of the waters, including oceans, lakes, great, sorry, streams, ponds, and rivers. Coventina protects bodies of water and their inhabitants. And she's happy to give you a divine assignment related to environmentalism if you ask her. Wishing wells were made in her honor, and today we continue the practice of throwing coins into water while making a wish. It's Coventina who grants these wishes. Since our bodies are primarily made up of water, she's very involved with helping us purify our physical self. She reminds us that purification also means keeping our thoughts and speech filled with positive words, which empower and strengthen our bodies and lives. That is so true. Okay, everything you ingest, it through your eyes, through your pores, through your nose, mouth, everything, you know, like everything you expose yourself to, you are ingesting in some way, shape or form. And it's so, so important. Like I stopped watching TV a few years ago. Like I have a TV screen in my room, which I plug my laptop into, you know, watch my Netflix or YouTube or Gaia or whatever on. Um, and I love the stuff that's on Gaia and I love the stuff that, you know, I can find on YouTube um, and Netflix. Oh my Lord, don't get me started. Um, <laughs> but I don't watch the news and stuff like that. So, you know, I live with people that do, so it's not a big deal, but I found my frequency raised when I wasn't surrounded by all the drama and the advertising and the negativity and all of that focus on, you know, the things that are <gasps> worthy. Like, that shit, like, come on. Like, just, yeah, I have no time and no patience for it anymore, so. Like, my parents are like, oh, something happened in this country. Yes, we've had this discussion. Ascension is happening. The earth is changing, unfortunately. Things will happen, but people have chosen to check out. That is their free will, mum. You don't get sad about it. Just let them go. Wish them well and let them go. We shall meet again one day. Now, you know, like, it's interesting because you can try and tell people about these things. They won't necessarily understand it. And, you know, that, I just said, meet people where they are. You know, I know maybe there's people that are watching this that are going to be like, what the hell is she on about? And I get that not all of us are at the same stage in our ascension. And so, yeah, I do apologize if I'm talking about too much sort of um, stuff that's not your thing. But oh, I have a treasure trove of information. So if I can be of any help um, in unconfusing you, I'm quite happy to do so. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to learn like it's a never-ending process this whole ascension thing the soul's evolution is a never-ending process there's always better there's always higher you can go so enjoy the journey and make sure you actually enjoy it i think that's really really important <laughs> we've taken the time to say that okay so the next card we have is damara you are good at helping counseling and healing children use your skills to help children now so the message from Damara is, one can be a gentle and fierce protector simultaneously. My vigilant focus on keeping harmony within households stems from my desire for children to maintain their youthful awe and sense of wonder. How else will we ensure that they'll see and speak with the fairies? How else will we foster the continuation of children's healing, laughter, and laughter? Sorry. Um, join with me in guiding the children and you'll see your own imagination sparked by these amazing young beings. Your own enthusiasm and youthful spirit attracts the children's respect and attention. I'll lead you towards young people who can benefit from your help. So, Damara, a Celtic fertility goddess whose name means gentle, Damara helps to bring peace and harmony to families and within households. She helps children maintain their youthful innocence and faith, Damara is happy to guide you with respect to the best way to help children, whether they are yours or someone else's. There you are. Okay, and now I'm going to finally just read the messages for the Wisdom of the Oracle cards. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Wisdom of the Oracle, that is what the deck or the packaging looks like anyway. So I'll start off with All That Glitters, which is number 16. So it's the protection message, nice and short and sweet. This is the card. And it says, this is a signal to walk away from what you are contemplating. 
There is a thin veneer of glitter and sparkle that masks something rotten underneath. Pursuing it will only bring about a difficult situation. You will be sorry you got yourself into. Stay away. It isn't it wonderful how spirit protects you. Better things await. Oh my goodness, that um, seven of cups. That's it. That sums up that card big time. Just be careful with what choices you're making because I feel like you may be barking up the wrong tree, especially when that card comes out. And Wisdom of the Oracle is insanely accurate. Even my own experience, like I've sat in my room, pulled cards for my parents who aren't really even into these things and having watched the um, antics between them during the day. The cards that came out were absolutely perfect. They said exactly what needed to be said. It was just amazing. This is why I love these readings. Okay, so the next card we have is Take a Nap, number 24. The protection message here is, you're a human being, not a human doing. Is it possible you are suffering from workaholism? Could you be the one who thinks it's your job to save everyone, to be there for everyone, and to go, go, go until you can barely see straight? Have you been as far as you can? Have you gone as far as you can? You've worked hard and nourished people and projects, but now you are an empty well and have no reserves for others or for yourself. Don't let your ego keep you going full speed when your body and spirit need rest. Exhaustion is calling you to stop what you're doing altogether and take a break. If you don't, the appearance of this card could portend a possible illness that stems from being totally overwhelmed. You will feel like a new person if you take that break. Do it now. Do it, do it, do it. This sums up the cards that came out in the reading as well about needing to rest. Okay, so number 39, new life. And, you know, 39 reduces down to 11. So, oh, no, it doesn't. I don't eat. <gasps> 12, so it's a three, um, Ascended Master's energy. I like it. So 37, also a um, protection message. So it, it, it says, this is a time to avoid drama at all costs, especially when it comes to other people's stuff. Your sensitivity is on overload these days and you are better served by keeping your distance. Your mantra today is, not my circus, not my monkeys. All this drama will pass and you will carry on unscathed and blameless. Oh, Lord, I actually said that to somebody today. It's not my circus, not my monkeys. That's hilarious. I love the synchronicities in life. And I'm definitely going to have to show this person that, that person this reading. And it's, it is a bit longish. Maybe she'll hold out for it. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people are just like, it's such a long reading. Why? But you know what? If you're meant to see the messages, you'll see the messages. I know that. That was one of the agreements that I have with you know, Michael. I don't want just everybody seeing it, only the ones that need to see it, please. All right, let's stop acting like a good boy. Yeah, he's our last card for this reading. So, protection message. Perhaps you felt almost certain that serendipitous events were meant to lead you to something better. It was supposed to be the perfect business or that person you gave your heart to was supposed to be the one, yet it all fell apart. Consider this. Sometimes synchronicity and serendipity come together to lead you directly into difficulties in order to deliver an important lesson you need to learn before you hit the jackpot. Don't get caught up in the drama of disappointment. There really is a silver lining in this cloud. Spirit always knows what you need and is guiding you to where you're meant to go. Pay attention to the signs presented to you. Oh, how perfect is that? And I could not think of a nicer way to finish off this reading, my lovely Libra. Have a wonderful few weeks, and I will see you again um, for the readings for the 4th of March onwards. Take care. Bye-bye. If I can kill this thing.